Hello, welcome to a new Creature tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover the new internal I live IK functionality of the Unreal 4 engine runtimes. So in this example, I am moving this yellow or brown barrel marker. You can notice it in the center of the screen. I'm moving it with my cursor keys and you notice the arm of the knight character is actually posing with very cool IK motion following the motion of the barrel, right? So I can dynamically move the barrel around the screen in real time and the arm of the knight character is actually following it in IK fashion. So this is very useful as you can tell for fighting games or any kind of game gameplay application where you actually need live IK from within your application. Okay, so at the end, end of this tutorial you're going to learn how to set up a rig like this with the new Creature Unreal Engine for runtimes. Okay, but before we continue, let me show you the actual rig of this knight. Okay, it's super simple. It's the shield, the torso, and the arm with the sword. All right, and by now you guys should be really familiar with the way Creature works. So I'm just going to skimp a bit on the details, but please watch the actual creature rigging animation tutorials to see how to set up a creature rig. As you can see, this is a pretty simple rig. You have bones coming in for the torso, you have bones for the arms over here, right? One single bone for the shield, bones going down for the legs, and overall root bone, I always have a root bone for the overall root motion, okay? And I have bones coming in for the top of the plume of the, uh, the hat, or whatever, the cloth coming, the cloth thing coming out. So we can do some really nice wavy motion with the band of physics motors, right? And I'm going to show you the knights. The easiest way to illustrate what's going on is to bring up the anim rig graph so you can actually see the layout of this character. Okay, so you can see we have a single band physics, physics motor running through the entire chain of the cloth on top of the head, right? And we have IK motors, IK motors for the, the leg and the arm, okay, right? And obviously this IK motor for the arm is going to get overwritten in the Unreal Engine it's, uh, runtime itself when we do the gameplay, so don't worry about that. But this is just for posing purposes as a stand-in. So, But the leg is actually active because it's actually planted to the ground. And then we have a move balance motor for the overall root motion, as I mentioned before, and a move balance motor over here for the top part of the torso. And then, and then we have a rotate cycle motor just to give it a bit more wiggle, a bit more wiggle motion to rotate the overall shield and arm. So pretty simple stuff. Okay, the cool stuff obviously is the band physics, which is driven, which is driving, sorry, driving the cloth on top of the head. Okay, and so there's also a wind field, wind field, a wind force that's affecting, blowing the cloth on top of the head. So if you play it right now, you get this really cool motion of this knight, so sort of like an idle breathing pose with the cool cloth motion on top of the, the head. Okay, but enough of that. So once you're done with that, click on Export Animation, Game Engines, and then depending on which version you have, you export the JSON into a folder and import it into the Unreal Engine runtime. All right, and to, to actually learn how to use the Unreal Engine runtimes, I recommend you watch, again, previous tutorials on how to set it up. It's actually really, really, really simple. You create an asset, uh, a creature, animation assets, you create the material, okay, and in this case I actually added a normal map with sprite bump, so it looks 3D, it looks pretty cool, but you don't have to do that. But essentially you create an animation asset, okay, and let me just open him up. You have an animation asset, you have, you create a creature mesh component, like so, alright, and then you assign the material and the animation asset to the character. Okay, so that's really all it is. Again, please read up on how to set up the creature Unreal Engine for runtimes before we continue. Okay, so assuming you've done that, we're going to, here to learn how to do live IK rigs within Unreal Engine using the creature runtime. So how do we do that? So click on Blueprints, and then let's open up a level Blueprint, okay? And you can see it's actually not that difficult. I have set this up for you already really, really simply by creating a bunch of nodes, okay? And there's a couple of new nodes that I've added to allow you to do live IK posing. Right? Okay, so before I get on to this live IK posing uh, section, let me just go into the user input portion to show you what's actually going on. I mentioned that I was actually moving that yellow barrel, right, with the keys. So I have a user input thing going on here. 
And you notice I have actually hooked up callbacks or triggers for each key, A, D, W, and S. And they move the barrel according to which key is pressed in different locations. That's really all it is. Okay, so that's really the key inputs. That's the easy part. Okay, so let's go back and talk about the IK posing again. So what do we do to do IK posing? It's really easy. So in the event tick, which is the per tick callback, the callback, update callback of your, your character blueprint, you the first thing you're going to do is you, you're going to create or call this function set blueprints blueprint bones IK constraint. Okay, so this is going to create an IK constraint live for your character within Unreal Engine. All right, so you, you, you call this function and it expects an input which is IK data in of type creature bone IK structure. This is basically a U struct. So you're going to have to create a, a struct, uh, an Unreal Engine struct uh, of type creature bone IK. Okay, and within creature bone IK, you're going to put in the two bones. So this is a two two bone IK. So you're going to put in two bones that you want to perform perform IK on. Okay. So I know the first bone is called hand bone one, and the second bone is called hand bone two. You get the names from within creature, right? Because you created. Remember, you created these two these two bones, and you can see it, this is called hand bone one, and this is called hand bone two. Okay. So look up the names from within the creature editor, right? So go back and put the, the appropriate names in, okay? And then, very simply, connect up a target position in world space, okay? In this case, my target position is actually the position of that marker barrel here, but you can do anything you want, right? And you can check on and off whether you want the IK to target positive or negative angles, whether to flip the IK orientation, okay? That's all it is, and then connect up the output of the struct into IK data in for this function, set blueprint bones IK constraint, okay? And, and, and that's really all it is, all right? This stuff over here just moves the barrel. It's not, it's not required probably for gameplay. You probably have a different way to target your IK constraints, but this is just moving that target barrel, and that target barrel's position gets changed and gets fed back into the creature bone IK struct, which, which then calls the set blueprint bones IK constraint function. So in essence, all you really need to care about is this stuff here. This function itself sets up the IK constraint live and you just update it at each event tick with a new target position determined from the struct over here. Okay? That's all it is. And so now if we if we play it again, let's let's take a look. Okay, let me move the window down actually. Let's take a look. Now look, I'm moving the barrel and the knight's arm is posing with a really nice IK action following the barrel, right? So now you actually have live IK playing from within Unreal Engine on a creature animation character. That's really cool. So you can already see how useful this is going to be for any kind of RPG, fighting game, or whatnot. Any kind of character that requires live IK action, you can use this new feature in Blueprints. So very powerful stuff. Okay, so one more thing I want to cover. So in, in addition to being able to pose live IK, I've, I'm also giving you the, the ability to actually override any bone position, okay, any bone position you want in world space with the with this new callback. This new callback, this new function, sorry, it's called set blueprint bones override. Okay? So if you don't want to do IK, let's say you wanted to connect up the bones of your character with some physics system live from within Unreal Engine. You wanted to use Unreal Engine's physics system to drive the motion of some of your bones, so you just wanted some procedural, live procedural animation from within Unreal Engine. What do you do? Well, very simple. You just call set blueprint bones override. Okay, this new function is here at each event tick, same thing. And what, what it does is it takes in an array. Okay, an array, and what array, what type, what type does the array take? It's an array of creature bone override structs, U structs. Okay, so what you do is you call this function, you make an array, okay, and then you feed into the array a bunch of creature bone override U structs. And each of these U structs contains data, the data that you, you're going to require to actually override your bone positions. So let's look at this U struct then. So U struct takes in a bone name, so put in the name of your bone, you can look it up within the creature editor, okay, and then you just put in the start 
and end positions in world space of that build. That's really all it is. So in, in, in the practical world, how you're going to use it is you're probably going to be piping or sending in, sending, sending in these start and end positions from some other procedural method, maybe from a physics engine, your own physics engine, Unreal Engine's physics engine, or maybe your own procedural methods, right? But, so, but this basically allows you, this entire chain here, pipeline here allows you to basically override bone positions of your choice and then post them in, in the new runtime. Okay, so very cool stuff. So I covered again today two things. One of them is the ability to do live IK from within Unreal Engine itself using the creature runtimes, using the new IK constraint function. And the other thing is the ability to override custom bone positions like using the set blueprint bones override function. Okay. So with these two functions, you should have a lot of power at your disposal now in the Unreal Engine runtimes. You can basically pose characters, override your bone positions, do cool live IK. So yeah, the limits they're, they're, the limits have been lifted and you can do some really, really amazing gameplay with your characters. I couldn't wait to see what you can do with them. So have fun animating and have fun developing games.